some. Uh, so uh, this is uh, this is this is insane. The other thing that's uh, that's uh, how how they went ahead and they patent your water. This is not me. This is even though God gave us water, came from heaven, they managed to patent your water because you're Oregonians. And if you want water, store water, create any kind of water, you need a reservoir. Well, now you need a permit. And I'll give you a prime example because this is ludicrous if you're going to actually go ahead and try to patent water. And uh, here's the bill. This is the water resource which they passed under your guys' noses through committees. This is a permit where you have to get it. A permit to get water. To store water. I didn't write that. That didn't come out of me. That came out of them. So I want you guys to see it. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. We can even read them. Uh, but this is this is insane right here. This is right here what drives what drove me insane. How can they patent new water? So uh, if they can do this, what else can they do? Who is behind that bill? Uh, Stephen E. Grasty oh. and your elected representatives, uh, Ted Ferrioli, <laughs> uh, Greg Walden, Ron Wyden. Uh, so, the, uh, so, so the people that you think that are actually representing you, they are not representing your best interest. And as you can see, the bill's right over there, and I'm be more than happy to provide those bills on how they systematically did it. And under your noses, the, they'll come over here and they'll preach everything they want you to hear. Turn around and go to Salem and go to Washington D.C. and do what they want through their corporations. So. Under this bill, which is called uh, con con the, the, 40, for the 114th uh, Congress, or Congressional Record, the House of Representatives, in here, you're going to see uh, between Jeff Merkley and Harry Reid, including using another thing, because you got to understand, and I apologize for deviating, Harry Reid passed a law called S. Uh, 198 and 199 Buick and Gold, which is right in our table, which I'll, pro I'll provide. Under that law, they're using Oregonian laws, which Nevada laws and Oregon laws are working hand in hand, which is insane. This is a, uh, not me. This is what they wrote and how they went about it. Matter of fact, one of the one of uh, Michelle Fiore's uh, running running mates or, or opponents is actually behind the ORS, which is called the Oregon Statute. Uh, or the Oregon Revision Statutes, which they're right there. The Oregon Revision Statutes. And under that, they created which is called Measurement 37. But anyways, under here, you're going to see how they're working, with mo mostly uh, through the pipeline. And how they're going ahead and run the pipeline all the way from Canada, all the way through the U.S., and whatever it's in its way is going to belong to the BLM, U.S. Forestry and Department of Fish and Wildlife. <laughs> that's not me, that's what they wrote. So... Uh, it'll be there, as I stated earlier. If you guys brought a thumb drive, the thumb drive will be brought, uh, we call, will be uploaded, and everything you see on these tables, you guys are gonna have. The only difference you're gonna have is that they're not highlighted. And why are highlighted? Because I brought what what's significant, what stands out, to grasp your your guys' attention, to show you guys that this is real. I did not make this up. I did not create this. This is them, and these are the questions you guys need to ask. How can they do this to you guys? Aren't they supposed to represent you and follow their oath of office? If they're supposed to follow their oath of office and they work for you, well, why are they passing bills like this? Question you guys, uh, hopefully, can I come with an answer? And I'm just going to do my best, you know, to give you all the information, the truth of what, what, what Lavoie and Ammon were standing for and what they were trying to uh, gravitate in regards to the Constitution. Because all these laws that you see here, that I will pass, like 1136, 1134, 1148, uh, even this one right here, on volume 161, House of Representatives, 114th Congress, it's totally unconstitutional. It violates Article 6, Section, section 2, Clause 2, and it violates Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17. And Article 1, Section 10. Yes, sir. And then at the same time, under, under Article 1, Section 9, 
you'll understand about title of nobility. And once you understand what it meant title of nobility, most of these individuals, like David Ward and Stephen E. Grassi, have self-appointed themselves, which is totally unconstitutional what our framers stated with regards to that, including in the Federalist Papers, which I left over there, 84. And, that's a, and it articulates why we cannot have a title of nobility and why we need to stop them, we the people, and why we the people need to come together and use our voice to remove these criminals out of office. Because they're, on, they're, in, they're, in, they're, they're, they're depriving you through misrepresentation. And this is where we're at right now. And I ask you guys, the Oregonians, if they can do it to the Hammonds, who's next? Look at yourselves here in this room. Who's going to be next? Who's going to stand shoulder to shoulder with you against the BLM, the Department of Fish and Wildlife, and the U.S. Forestry? Who's going to help you protect your land, your children, your minerals, what you work for, for your entire life, so you can give to your children and your grandchildren? That. How, did, how does Les Zates play into this? Les Zates. <laughs> this gentleman right here, Les Zates, right here. And I like to meet this guy while I'm here in Oregon. And definitely shake his hand on how he defrauded you guys. And how he participated in defrauding with all the criminal re elected representatives. This gentleman right here, he works for the Oregonian. He was apparently at one time a chief editor and decided when, when uh, Maui Refuge and our patriots were there, he decided to step down and become a, a, uh, an investigator to skew the, the, the narrative, to skew the truth. And the reason why is because of the investments that he has with his wife. For instance, he run, he's in the Oregonian, he's in the uh, Mount Hare uh, Enterprise, he's part of the Blue Mountain Eagle. He's, he's also with his family, including his brother Lyndon Zates, they went ahead and they, and they uh, uh, participated in what's called, <sighs> there's so much information on this guy and I apologize, but uh, between, between this guy Les Zates, Scott Acoster, and Lyndon Zates. They run most of your media, almost 80% of your media. They control the media. So you want to know why you don't get the truth is because this gentleman right here through Iron Triangle, Clearwater, the Fairground Refuge that he participated in. And matter of fact, there was actually a document that I was supposed to bring and I'll show it to you guys. And that's my apology, my fault. But on this bill, you'll see him in cahoots with Zach Williams. Zach Williams, the same Zach Williams to help him fund Malheur Enterprise. You guys are familiar with Malheur Enterprise? Yes. No? So Malheur Enterprise is like a newspaper. Another newspaper? Just like the Oregonian. It's the small town weekly in Vail, Oregon. There you go. Also, he's part of, his family runs Clearwater uh, Publishing Corporation. They became now River Rogue uh, Public corporation. Uh, this is not me. This is them. This is this is what they create. This is what they created. So while he's doing this, basically rewriting the narrative, and making our patriots look bad, because this is what he pays for. He has money. Uh, got land through the BLM. This is not me. You can go to the county recorder, uh, county recorder's office. If they even let you allow you to step foot into the, into the county recorder's office and ask for these documents. Look at the ranch and look at the investments he has in, these ran uh, in his ranch and other ranches around the, around the Oregonian. Or Oregon, I apologize. Oregon. Which county is that? Uh, Har Harney County, Mount Hare County, and, my, and then the other one is... Uh, Grant. Grant. Is it Grant County? Maybe Grant County. I don't know Grant, yes. but uh, Grant County. But I know Mount Hare... Uh, from the, the from the research that we found, it's uh, Mount here in Harney County. Uh, now that now I'm aware that's Grant County, and I'm glad you brought it up, and we'll emphasize on that. That's where he lives. That's where he lives. Yeah. So, all these three locations, you guys can go ahead and go into the county recorder's office and ask for property with regards to his name, Scott Acoster, and Lyndon Zates, and his old family there. This is how they skew the narrative. They did this intentionally because he because he. <laughs> Back in 2001, during the Steens Mountain Act, 
I want to make sure. All these people, all co-conspirators, this is what Les Zates writes for. And he writes beautiful, I mean, he's, he is, his writing is amazing. I mean, including myself, I believe them. But when I started realizing the conflict of interest and the criminality that he's participating in, I was like, this guy's a criminal. Just, just all he does is sit behind a computer and, and, and skews a narrative. At the same time, laughing to the bank at your expense. So uh, this is who Les, Z Les Zates and how he participates in everything with his wife, Scott Callister, his brother, Lyndon Zates, and all the co-conspirators through the media. That's why you guys won't get the, 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 the truth. Uh, this is why I'm here. I'm here to vindicate Lavoie, Lavoie's name and the Hammonds and the Bundys because what they did to what I do, what I, these criminals are doing to them, it, they, they should be tried for treason under Article 3, Section 3. So, one of the things that before uh, Antonio Scalia passed away and rest his soul. One of the things he said about the Constitution, he said, the, con the Constitution is not a living organism. It's a living, do it's a living document, and it says what it says, and it doesn't say what it doesn't say. And this is why these people, well, I, I don't understand why, how these people can go ahead and steal your guys' property. How can they go ahead and create unconstitutional laws so for their benefit, with no remorse, and I ask you guys, the Oregonians, what are you guys going to do for the Hammonds? The Hammonds should be out right now. Like I said earlier, Ron White could have had the Hammonds out yesterday under, 11, under House Bill 1134 in the Wyden Amendment. And I will repeat this probably through the whole process. What are you guys going to do? Because if you guys don't do nothing for the Hammonds, don't expect anybody to stand up for you guys. Silence is consent. Correct. And this should hit home. I mean, this is going in your, in your state. And every day knowing that the Hammonds are illegally incarcerated because of these criminals that co-conspired co for the minerals that they have, including Harry Reid, should be in jail today. And they should have it should be free. The problem is, what are we going to do about it? Who's going to take that initiative step? As an outsider, all I can do is give you the message. I can give you the truth. But I cannot do anything because this is not my state. All I can do is support you guys. And when you guys ask for that help, we will be here to help you. But we need... But we need